Let's build a simple game together to learn Armour 3D. It's going to be similar to the Brackies game that he showed using Unity, except using Armour 3D, but it's not at all like Brackies, so it's much more fun. Let's get started. Firstly, let's go ahead and add a ground plane. This is going to be the floor of our player. So let's put beneath the cube object, which will be our player. And we're going to scale it in edit mode along the edge so we can create a long runway like object. Now that we've got this, we can go ahead and grab the bottom face, add some thickness to it by extruding the bottom part. And there you go. Now we have something that's starting to resemble our game. We can align the camera to be uh, in the position that we want for our player. Let's move our player closer to the camera. And here we have the game scene. Now what we want to do is we can go ahead to the materials tab and add some basic materials to both the ground and the player. We can add a sky texture to the world to add some extra lighting. Let's give this a test to see what our game is looking like and you can see we have an issue with the ground plane. So let's select it, go to the materials panel, go all the way down here to the army properties and set the color mode to both. Now this is because our object is essentially trying to uh, hide the face that isn't rendered in camera, but it's hiding the run face. It's hiding the face that is rendered in camera. So we're just inverting it. The, the equivalent is going to uh, edit mode and flip in the normals. It's the same thing. We're swapping what part is facing the camera. Nice. Now that we've got this facing upright, our camera is rendering it in properly and everything's fine. Let's add some passive physics to the ground plane, but you can see the collision box is offset, so we need to reset the origin to the geometry. And there we go, now we can do the same thing for the player, but set the physics to active. And let's make sure everything's working, so give this a playtest, and you can see the cube is resting on the ground plane, everything's working fine, but there's no controllability yet, so let's go ahead and add some logic notes to this. Firstly, select cube, go down to the data tab for the object, add a new node trait, and let's call this player with a capital P, if not a uh, hacks font like this. Now let's open up the logic node editor window, select that node group made, and let's grab a keyboard node so we can control the force that is applied onto our player. Let's set this to A, and since we've got physics, let's grab the apply force node. I made a whole video talking about physics based movement in my previous video. You can check it out right here. Link in description as well. But essentially, let's apply a negative force on the X axis. So our object moves to the left on the X axis. Now everything's working fine. So what we want to do is we can go ahead and control the uh, different settings of the physics. So the slidiness, for example, if you set the friction to be one and one for both the ground plane and the cube, everything is really stiff. But let's set this to be half friction. This means that we're going to be a lot less stiff. We're going to be more sliding, as you can see here. So it allows for a lot more control over the movement and feel of your player. So let's duplicate this node group, set it to be the D key, and invert this value to be a positive value, so it's going to move to the right. Now let's move the object forwards on update, so every single frame, we're not going to be able to control the movement forwards. So we're going to use the translate object node, set it to the Y positive, and add a, a couple reference objects so you can see uh, the fact that the object is moving. Now let's go ahead, select the camera, shift select the player, press Control P, parent them both together and now they're going to be uh, stuck together so we can see the camera follow the object around. However, as I mentioned previously in the movement video, there are different ways of moving objects inside of Iron 3D and we're going to use the on local axis translate object node. Now this is a much better way in my opinion of moving objects for scenarios like this because we have like a speed option, we can set it to 1 to move it forwards and now we can use a float and this float we can turn it into a tree variable. In this side panel, we can go ahead to the tree variable section, add a new uh, tree variable in the form of this float, and set whatever property we want to be the speed. This allows for further development down the pipeline uh, because we have a variable that is controllable instead of a static uh, pre-coded value. Now we can add some little spike objects. So let's go ahead and grab a cone. We can scale it up a bit, decimate it a bit, and this is going to be our enemy object. So let's go ahead and grab some colors that we can apply to it. Let's apply this sort of teal green color to it to define it as an enemy. And we can set some passive physics to it, set it to be a cone physics shape object. Let's also set it to trigger so it will be letting any physics object go right through it without any bounces. Now back in the player's node group, we can go ahead and grab the on contact array node. Now this is a collision detection node, so we can define the first socket to be for the player, that's the object that we're looking for, and the second one is going to be a group of objects because it's got an orange socket which signifies arrays. 
So let's grab the collection node, and this collection node has an orange socket as well, because the collection is a group of objects, an array. So let's go ahead and select the enemy object, press M, move it to a new collection by creating a new collection, call it spike or enemy or whatever you want, and select that to be the collection that we're looking for in the collision node. So if our object collides with any object from this spike collection, then it's going to result in restarting the scene. So let's set the scene active to be the scene that's already active. So we're restarting or reloading the level that we're on. Now let's select the lamp, set it to be a sun object, and obviously turn down the intensity because this is just white. And this is going to give us some pretty nice lighting. So we have a decent looking game that's in the works. And let's continue now by basically doing some level building. Let's move the object to the side. I've got snap enabled, so it's snapping into place. And we can just build out uh, the level with adding all these spikes. And then once we've added all the spikes all the way to the end, we can just delete a little bit of a path so the player can have a way of moving forwards. Looks like a decent first level to me. However, if we accidentally fall off the side, well, there's no way of restarting. We just fall forever. So let's fix that. Let's grab the on time node. So what we're going to do is we're going to check uh, it to see if the player's underneath the ground every second. So we can check the repeat button. And now we can grab the gate node. So this allows us to compare two values. So let's get the location of the object, the player object. And we're going to separate out the vector location. So we can grab the individual axes using the separate x, y, z. And so what we want to do is grab the vector node, plug it in the x and y because we don't need them. They can stay the same it's the z axis that we're interested in because the z axis if it's below sort of minus two in this case let's say uh, then we know it's beneath the ground so if it is beneath the ground then we can do something like reloading the scene so let's set this to be less or equal so if it's less as in if it's minus three minus four minus five or it's minus two then we can go ahead and restart the scene by setting the scene active to be the scene that's already loaded we can frame up this mechanic add uh, the name of whatever we want change the color and now we have a pretty decent game going on we can move the player around and in future videos we're going to talk about adding multiple levels switching between those levels automatically we're going to talk about main menus and sounds and a score system with coins that we can collect and many other things that we're going to make in future installments of the series. So thank you so much for watching this mini series and I'll see you in the next video.